Sister Shanice in the house. If you're hearing my voice, it means there's breath in your body. It means it's a new day. A new day for you to be working towards accomplishing all the goals and aspirations that you have pented up inside of you. Tune in to Sister Shanice on Galaxy Afi with the only de-brainwashing station. Every Wednesday for Black Empowerment Shows and Alternative Saturdays for the Community Talk Shows from 10 a.m. through to 1 p.m. Join the discussions, join the debate and get involved. You can tune in via www.galaxyafiwi.com or for Android phone users, go to Play Store and download the Galaxy Afiwi app or find us via TuneIn in the app. Sister Shanice in the house, in the house. Galaxy Afiwi, providing a platform for the voiceless to be heard. Spread the word. Here on Galaxy Afiwi, we are proud of our various African languages and we have a lot of pride in the fact that we are Africans and that we have this beautiful culture of a multitude of languages. The way we dress, the colours and the way that we express ourselves, we're a, a beautiful people. Uh, talking about a revolution, finally uh, the the tables are starting to turn and you know when we talk about a revolution what we're talking about is change change that's going to favor us as a people change that is a bit more favorable yeah for us as a people so uh, greetings caller who do we have on the line i think it might be hey tendai mari Tendai greetings my beloved sister Shanice, I am indeed richly blessed and giving thanks and praises, it is a joy to be an African and always a joy and a blessing to be on Galaxy Radio, the, the, uh, the brainwashing station, the only the brainwashing station, Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari and our uh, brother leader Bandaka as always, it's a privilege and an honor to be hearing your voice and your words of wisdom through Galaxy Afui and in case we've got any new callers, callers you need to tune in to Galaxy Afui on a Monday evening from 8pm through to 10pm to hear our leader Bandaka, one of our leading and highly respected figures in our community, a spiritual leader, a community leader, a community pan-Africanist who has a heart that's about nation building. You know, you've got to tune into that show. A wonderful, wonderful leader indeed. Uh, leader Bandaka, it's indeed an honor to have you on my show and it's also a great, great honor that you're going to be joining us on Sunday at Summit of Solutions. Rise yourself up, leader. And just in case there's some listening for the first time, who may not know you, please just introduce yourself to the Galaxy family. Well, Tendai Mwari, let me just first of all thank you for all your kind words, your kind commendation, my beloved sister, and just to say that all honor and blessings return. I am Brother Lidem Bandaka. I am the spiritual leader of the al Kebulan Revivalist Movement. We are a liberation movement that is based upon an African-centered spiritual cultural philosophy which we call al Kebulan Liberty, which means living according to the divine teachings and traditions of our mother culture. We're also founded upon the profound wisdom and teachings and philosophy of the most eminent prophet and king, His Excellency Marcus Mosiah Garvey and his spirit and mission child, the eminent prophet and king, Papa Omawale Malcolm X, and that makes us indeed nationalist, pan-Africanist in our outlook and in our conceptualization of uh, our people's liberation fight and how we need to organize and how we need to understand the nature of the world in, in which we live as, as African people. So that's what we are about. We're fundamentally about reviving our authentic spiritual cultural traditions as the center and the foundation of uh, how we live our lives and how we conceptualize and understand our world and our and the enemies that are meted out against us and how we should organize in the fight for total liberation. Uh, and just also to say, my beloved sister, that we have been in existence since 
January 1987. So we give thanks and praises for all, uh, for, for life, for the meaning and purpose of life, and for all mercies, great and small. Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari. Oh, beautiful. And uh, awesome works you do indeed, my brother. And uh, I was privileged to be able to experience Shamila for the first time uh, on the first Sunday of the month. And uh, because, as you were saying, you're all about reviving our authentic, you know, Africanness and, uh, and, and reviving our African spirituality is something that's dear to your heart as well. And so, uh, on the first First uh, Sunday of every month, you have Shamila, which is, you know, uh, a place that we can go to try and reconnect with our African spirituality. There are many of us that, you know, were in the church. I was, you know, in the ch- brought up as a Christian, you know, in the church as well. We heard from Brother Jaminia; he was brought up, you know, in the church. There are many of us who were brought up in the church, but you know, we, we, our eyes are now open. We found a, a new way, but but we're still searching, you know, for for that spiritual connection. And we know that spirituality is such an important part of who we are as Africans and, and you provide that space and that teaching as well that you know helps to repair you know us as Africans spiritually uh, please tell us a bit about Shamila and uh, how people can come and experience that reconnection back with our African spirit yes can I marry let, let me let me preface my comments by quoting first of all quoting our spiritual mother and cultural scientist, Mama Marimba Ani, who says that we as an African people, we must find a, a way of spiritually recentering ourselves, spiritually binding ourselves and spiritually recentering ourselves on a regular basis. Uh, that's her profound guidance and teachings uh, to us. And we also understand that spirituality when we study African culture uh, and African traditions, we will find that spirituality is the center and foundation of African culture, the core of African consciousness, and therefore the essence of the African personality. So that African people understand and view our world and our existence as being uh, fundamentally and centrally spiritual. Our cause and our purpose as fundamentally and centrally uh, spiritual. And so it it behooves us to understand that for us to liberate ourselves, we need to really and truly know ourselves and be ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to know ourselves as Africans and to be ourselves as Africans, we must reconnect with our African spirituality. This is where, as Mama Marimba Ani tells us, in our rituals, we discover uh, and we experience the deepest aspect the deepest essence of ourselves, our African selves, our Africanness. And so we cannot be truly empowered unless we uh, reclaim and unless we reorientate ourselves according to our African spirituality. This is why we say freedom begins with the freeing of the mind and soul. Africans must reconnect with our African spirituality. We contend uh, as a movement that this is the reason why the oppressor has tried to demonize our African spiritual traditions in order to alienate us from these traditions so that we don't connect with the source of greatest empowerment for us as a people. We understand that. And so our gods must be project, uh, projected as, uh, as, 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 as demons. Mm-hmm. Our rituals, mm-hmm. our, uh, our traditions, our ceremonies, uh, even our very names, our languages, must be consigned to an abyss of, of, of evil and devilism. So we recognize that and we realize that in order for us to be truly empowered, we must reclaim and reconnect with our African spirituality. So, that, so for that reason, Shumira, uh, which is our African-centered worship, uh, that we convene every first Umadha day of the month so that we start the month with the right energy. We call our people to the African shrine and we gather around the shrine and we observe our, our spiritual uh, traditions, our spiritual practices. We share in that spiritual journey, that spiritual experience t- uh, together. Um, and in, in, in so doing, we are, by, we are connecting again with our African, our authentic African roots, and we've been doing this is our the first 
program of the Al Kebelan Revivalist Movement was was our Shemura, and it's designed to ground us in our traditions and to cement our our bond with each other mm-hmm. on a spiritual level uh, as as Africans. This is this is what bonded us together in our tradition, our spiritual practices. And you know, there's a saying that culture is the glue that holds a people together. As yes. Africans we understand for us that our spirituality is the binding agent within the glue. So without practicing our African spirituality, we really don't have the strength of binding agent that we need to really uh, bind us together uh, in one as one people. This is where we're really going to find our, our, our unity, and in our unity we find our strength and our power. Send that Mwari. Tenda Amwari, yeah, thank you so much, Lida Bandako, for the great works around that and spirituality. So, oh, I'm hearing some feedback. Uh, sorry, uh, you haven't got a radio on or anything. I don't think I. No, no, my sister, okay. I've got nothing on in the background. All right, uh, so my apologies to the listeners. Yeah, the the spiritual side of our who we are as a people, you know, as you said, it's been ripped from us. And, you know, culture, you said, is, is, you know, the glue that binds us together as a people. Now, if we, culture, when we talk about culture and the importance of culture, I was um, touching on it earlier in terms of music and how music is an important part of our culture and why it's so important for us to have control of our music because it's, you know, who we are, the essence of who we are is in that music and how we see ourselves is how we as a community and as a body of people will see ourselves through our music and uh, equally spirituality you know dance and all of that an important part of our culture and I remember at Shamila you were saying that um, you know the 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 power of of religion nowadays as part of this culture that we've adopted you know we do have to look at whose religion it is that we're practicing so for example with Christianity what it does it has us as Africans bowing down before a God that doesn't look like us it has us seeking you know to be saved and seeking forgiveness from a God who doesn't look like us and then you know we wonder why so many of us worship you know the image in which you know the God that we're bowing down to you know is in and so it's so damaging to us as a people because then we don't have any faith and confidence in our, ourselves or in each other or in our ability to be able to do for self because you know the the spiritual side of us is saying well this is the one who can save you and this is the image of the one that can save you and it's a white image you know so don't look to yourself or your brothers and your sisters for that to, to be saved you know yeah. I'm going to open the lines in a little while callers I can see a caller trying to come through already but please give us just 10 minutes 15 minutes and then we'll open the lines up Yes, my, my brother. Um, so yes, spirituality. And this is why they, like you were saying, they demonized, you know, our, our spirituality so that we wouldn't have confidence and faith to be able to find that inner power within ourselves that we used to be able to find, you know, but have to, it's another form of enslavement really, isn't it? Because before they whipped us to worship them and to bow down before them and to adhere to their command and now they've got us spiritually whipped to bow yes, down to it, them but let me allow you to come in my brother yes, I was just going to say it is indeed the most powerful um, form of enslavement to enslave the mind and the souls of a people to bewitch the souls of a people to the point that they see divinity in their oppressors right. if we see divinity in our oppressors then as Baba Ashwa Kwesi says, the enemy then becomes your deity. You find yourself worshipping the image of your deity, of your enemy, uh, as your deity. Mm -hmm. You cannot conquer a people more completely and more profoundly than to have them worshipping your image because in essence they are worshipping you. This is why our great warrior scholar, Baba Yusuf Ben Yokanan says, religion is the deification of a people's culture. Therefore, religion empowers the people in whose culture the religion is expressed. That makes so much sense. You know, if you verify, if you understand that culture is the collective personality of a people manifested in their natural and complete way of life, then when you verify the culture of a people, 
you are deifying the people themselves. You are worshipping the people themselves. Yeah. And this is why we have that kind of relationship uh, with Europeans. We're, we are overwhelmed by their, their imagery, by their very presence. We are overwhelmed to the point that we cannot function. Mm -hmm. We cannot be ourselves mm -hmm. when they are around, when they are present, because we are subconsciously in awe of them, mm -hmm. because because their image is etched in our psyche yeah. as our deity. Yeah. So our position when we come across uh, Europeans is to prostrate. Prostrate doesn't necessarily mean physically, but mentally, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm. uh, psychologically. Mm. We are prostrating in front of them. We bow down to them. We throw ourselves down in front of them. Mm -hmm. We kiss their feet mm -hmm. uh, mentally and spiritually and emotionally. Mm -hmm. We are constantly worshipping them. We assume that they are supreme to yes. us because they have etched their image in our psyche as our deity. Yeah. We have to exorcise ourselves yeah. of this energy because it is extremely destructive. Mm -hmm. And hence the saying, no people ever defeat an enemy praying to the, to the, to praying to the God of the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's totally impossible. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so much so, impossible. they've etched their image, they've etched their, themselves so much so into our psyche that, you know, we believe that we have to look to them for all the answers, economically, politically, culturally, Absolutely. you know, it's almost as if, like you say, it's so destructive that we can't even function as a people on the whole without their involvement. Mm -hmm. That's why we see the African governments going to them for the answers, going to them for the solutions, going to them yeah. to for, to feed them, go into them to, to clothe them and, and everything because yeah. etched in their minds through the indoctrination that they've had through the education system and through the spirituality they're our saviours they're the ones, you know, who, who we have to look to, you know for everything that we need and so like mm -hmm. you say, it's so damaging and so destructive, it's only when you can like you say, when you've gone through the exorcism and you've exorcised mm -hmm. them from your mind to see them for the demons that they really are and not the dead uh, that they pretend to be it's only when you get to that point that you can then realize you know that we've got to do for self we have to do for self you know in order to be able to elevate ourselves as a people but we've got a long way to go on that journey my brother because you know as we can see there's so many of our people who are caught up you know in the European worship of you know of God in my own family you know I'm one of the few that's left it behind and um, you know so you know for, for our parents generation were bowing down to a European God. They've got this generation bowing down. Many of us are still taking our children into those churches who are still bowing down to a European God. And then we wonder, you know, why we, we can't do for self. And they know what they've done to us. And they know what they're doing to us. But nevertheless, you know, they then, after poisoning our minds, poisoning our spirit, and disabling us and making us dysfunctional, want to turn, want to point the finger at us and criticize us, you know, for not doing for self, if we don't do for self. Such is the hypocrisy and the wickedness of these people, you know. But, you know, part of the exorcism of all of this, you know, my brother, is attending Shamila. Uh, which is on the first uh, Sunday of every month at uh, the Chestnut Community Centre. I will highly recommend it. I was there, you know, was it last strong? And I'm definitely going to be there the first Sunday of next month as well because we have a works to do. If we're going to, because I don't know if you was tuned in a little earlier and hearing from our brother Jemenia who's talking about and what we're going to be talking about on Sunday, economic opportunities uh, in Africa. Were you able to hear some of that, my brother? Tenor Mari, no, I, no, I wasn't, and that's because, as, as you know, my sister, where my family is experiencing a bereavement at the moment, and my beloved cousin who passed away um, recently so is sorry. going to be laid to rest on Koumba Day, Friday, this Friday, right. um, this Koumba Day, and and so we're caught up in the throes of organising that as well. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, yeah. When I'm finished with you, I'm going to have to run down to the the uh, funeral directors with my uh, my mother and my aunt, my cousin's mother, mm. and and uh, do some business there as well. So 
Our condolences, my brother. Our sincere condolences. And uh, thanks again for taking the time out during this time, you know, to engage with mm. us. And, uh, well, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about, on Sunday at Summit of Solutions, <clears throat> we're looking mm -hmm. at, you know, our economic solutions. But, you know, one of the reasons why we've invited you to this really to have uh, uh, you know to deliver a presentation for us at Summit of Solutions is because in everything that we need to do you know we need to be mindful that our spirit is in it as well or ought to be in it and we have to have the right spirit in what we do so right. even if we're looking at setting up business in Africa we've got to make sure and Jaminia touched on it as well you know that we're going with the right spirit you know, uh, mm -hmm. the African spirit. And uh, and so we need to have an overstanding of the extent to which we have been spiritually, you know, damaged uh, so that, and the works that needs to be, needs to be done so that can, we can reorientate ourselves and like you say, go back in a, in a, a centered way as well. So um, my brother, we were talking about Ghana. We were talking about the business opportunities in Ghana. As we know, you know, they're very much a Christian country. Uh, uh, and let's, 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 say, let's say a Christianized country yes. rather than a Christian country. You're right. You follow me? Yes, I do follow you. Yes, my brother, a Christianized and a Muslimized uh, country yes. Uh, yeah. as well. So you know, but when we go back, we want to go back. You know. Uh, as centered as possible what is the process how can we go about becoming you know more centered now as as be more centered spiritually as an african well can i marry the process has to start uh, as and where we are to our ancestors said to count stand you start from where you stand you don't start from the green that is at the pinnacle uh you don't start with the uh the, the greens that are you know uh, that are meters and meters away from you, you start with the green that's at your feet. Mm -hmm. So we start the process from where we're at. We start it in our homes. We start it in our communities. And we build. We develop um, our, our spiritual uh, traditions. Uh, uh, and we continue to we do small things and we do bigger things. And we come together uh, as families. And we come together as a community. And we give expression to the various elements of our African spirituality and our African spiritual consciousness. Uh, when we go home to the motherland, we, we try to connect with uh, any organization or groups that are designed to preserve our African spiritual and cultural traditions. In Ghana, uh, we have linked up with a movement called the, uh, the Africania movement. Uh, and when we have been blessed to visit Ghana, we have visited the African movement, we have worshipped with the African movement, we have sat at the feet of the elders of the African movement and learned um, from them. And even then, they are also getting a fight from the Christianized and Islamized um, African mm. in, in, uh, in, in Ghana. Uh, but this is what we do, this is what we have to do. And we connect with other Africans around the world who are spiritually awake um, and spiritually wise to the point that they... Uh, to appreciate and understand the need to restore and to, and to reconstruct our African spirituality as the foundation um, uh, of our lives and, and, and our liberty. Um, that's what we have to do, and, and it's a step-by-step -step approach. We have to ensure that when our children, when our babies are born, that we give them African names, but not only give them African names, but we bring them to the African shrine within the context of the African community, and we bless them before the African shrine, rather than taking them into an alien religious environment um, for them to continue to curse their souls and bewitch their souls. Let us build our African shrine. Let us build our African Ipeti Sut. Ipeti Sut is an ancient Kemetian name um, for a holy place, or a holiest of places. Let us build our African Ipeti Sut. Every community that we see in this country, represented in this country, uh, can be recognized and identified. Their presence can be identified by the presence of a uh, of the sacred uh, a sacred place. So that the Jewish community, there is no Jewish community without a Jewish synagogue. Mm -hmm. There is no Hindu community without a Hindu temple. Mm -hmm. There is no Muslim community without a Muslim mosque. There is no Sikh community without a Sikh Gurdwara. 
there should not be an African community without an African Iteki foot or whatever other name, a Kapata or whatever other name you want to call our sacred places. That should be the spiritual center that provides the axis around which our community revolves. Where, in, as in other communities, the elders and the experts gather in their holy places. They worship together with the rest of the community. And, they, and this is where they make their most important decisions mm -hmm. about the lives of their community, the lives of their people. Mm -hmm. We must do the same. This is how, this, this is where they sit down and look at the community overall and the challenges that face the community and how they should collectively face those challenges, whether those are economic challenges, whether those are social challenges, whether they are political challenges, whether they are scientific and technological challenges, whether they are mm -hmm. housing challenges where they are challenged in terms of health care and, and, and social welfare. This is where they sit down and look at their community and the needs of their community mm. and how, uh, how, uh, how resources should be distributed mm. to address the various needs of their community. This is where they sit down and look at their young people, mm. what's happening with their young people, and what provisions need to be put in place to preserve the, the consciousness of their young people and the commitment of their young people to their own communities and where they decide uh, what resources they're going to be, uh, uh, what they're going to be releasing uh, in order to, to uh, support their young people through school or through college or through university or whatever it is. These, these are, these, this is how other communities organize themselves mm -hmm. and we can and must do the same. Absolutely. We, we must build that Ipeti foot. Mm -hmm. We must build that Ipeti foot. Our those Ipeti foot mm -hmm. must be built up and down the country. But we have to start with one. We can't stand. You start from where you stand. We start with the first green. Mm -hmm. We have to start with one. Mm -hmm. And if we build one, and then once we build the Ipeti foot, then we must have a school. But you know, we can't build the Ipeti foot and we can't build a school without a proper um, economic program, mm -hmm. a proper viable economic program. So the economics. Uh, is very, very important. It's extremely important. But the economics must be tied to the spiritual. And all of them must be uh, centered around a nation-building objective. And the core, at the core of which must be our culture and our spirituality. That must be the foundation. That must be the core. Mm -hmm. Tendamba. Tendamware. Absolutely, Brother Leader. You know, and this is, you know, from, from the description there of the importance of, you know, the activities and the considerations that you was just outlining that we would be making in, you know, this, this uh, temple of ours. It shows how connected spirituality is as an aspect of our culture and why as you mm -hmm. said you know that culture is the glue that holds the people together you know because Absolutely. it's through you know the the spiritual gathering when we come together as a people and we gather together as a people and we worship together as a people you know an image that looks like us as well and you know whilst you know in that place where we're together and one spiritually we begin to make the decisions as you were saying you know that's going to impact how we grow uh, as a community so so important and uh, you know as you was just rounding off by saying there how important a viable economic program is as well and that's what Summit of Solutions is all about it's about us trying to you know find some viable economic opportunities that we can invest in so that we can generate the funds that we need in order to build to start building our nation and maybe one of the things we ought to be investing in building is you know how, what did you call it the Ipeti foot. I put Ipeti foot. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Ipeti foot. Ipeti. Ancient Kemetian um, name for a sacred place. Spell it, it for me, please. Places. Spell it. Uh, I P E T mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hyphen mm -hmm. I S U T. Uh -huh. uh huh. Ipeti foot. Mm -hmm. So you know That's we may, we need to build our ipeti foot, which can you know not only be a place where we can you know gather and worship together spiritually, but as you were saying, could be a facility that's used to educate our children, educate our people. It could be a community center facility as well that we could be using as a collective. It's so 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 important. And so you know we're going to be looking at the various opportunities that we've got. You know to. Be the nation building 
in Africa, which could in turn release some of the funds that we need to do some nation building uh, here as well, because we need to, you know, improve our economic si uh, situation here. We can't be looking out to, to those who don't look like us, don't like us, to be creating the jobs and opportunities for our children, you know, and, and our population is growing here, and our population is growing in Africa as well, so change is important. Okay, let me give out the number so that our community can give us a call here on the Big G, should they want to interact with you, uh, Brother Leader Bandaka, and then we'll, we'll go back to our conversation until we get the calls coming in. So, uh, yeah. we've got a call uh, coming in already, 270. Yeah. Hold, hold it there, please, 270. Let me just give out the call, let me just give out the phone number. The number that you need to call in on is 0207-193-0174. That's 0207-193-0174. Uh, let me see if I was successful in adding caller 270. Greetings, caller 270. Do we have you on the line? Yes, greetings, Sister Shanice. Blessings. Greetings, greetings. Who do we have on the line? This is Desmond from up in the sticks in Bedford. Oh, rise up, Brother Desmond. Rise up. Thank you for calling in. And we've got Leader Bandaka on the line. Go ahead and interact with our brother. Uh, good morning, good morning and rising. Um, I am very humbled to be listening to such a highly intellectual debate this morning. And particularly that I have a great interest in researching the spiritual movements of our people mm -hmm. and recognizing that no state, kingdom or empire has ever been established without a belief system. And what has happened in terms of the African people is that our spiritualism from about the 5th century under Justinian the Catholic Church has separated the material from the spiritual. Now, we need to find a way to reconnect the spiritual with the material because they are a coin of two sides. And what we have now is where our churches or our alien culture are separated our spiritual from our material so people that are involved in these religious alien religious practices um, have divorced themselves from the community and have become a group to themselves and they show little or no interest in the social and economic challenges that is faced by our people so I wonder what the brother would uh, comment in terms of how a spiritual system in the future will reunite the material with the spiritual so that, for example, uh, in the rise of the Malian kingdom, there was a belief system that all within the empire were brothers. And in so doing, regardless of what tribe they came from, they were able to build one of the greatest African empires. So I wonder how the brother would see the future in terms of how we go about linking the spiritual to the material. Rise up, my brother. Let's go over to Leader Bandaka uh, for a response to that. And can the callers in the group please put your phone on uh, mute while we allow our brother Leader Bandaka to respond. Thank you so much. For that, it's Brother Desmond. Can I, Sister before I, before I respond, can I, um, I'm, I'm in a, a bit of a dilemma here. My mother is waiting for me to, um, take her to the, uh, take her now to the funeral directors. Okay. Um, and I, I can do, do yeah, that's, okay. that's fine, my brother. Okay. So, so, Sister Shinis, yes. Uh, I we have to let you go. Yes, we have to let you go, my brother. We hear you. But you know what? This conversation do, is going I, to continue on. Uh, I, I, will answer my brother's, I will answer my brother's question. I'm, I'm obviously, 
by the grace of God, we will be here on, um, on, on Sunday. Sunday. Before you do that, yeah. let me just let you hear the question from uh-huh. the other caller in the group, and then maybe you can address that on Sunday or on another day, another day as well. Okay. Yeah, greetings, caller. I, 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 very quickly, very briefly. I think it's greetings, it's Sister Shanice, to Sister Susanne in Botswana. Greetings to my, my brother, uh, Tendai Mwari. Tendai Mwari. Yeah, so my, it's a shame, my sis, but our, our brother, he's he's got to go now. But if you just quickly leave him with your question, and then maybe he'll find a way of giving us a call back before the end of the show. Okay, just really quick. I wanted to know uh, how it works as far as practitioners of African spirituality. I had an opportunity while I was still living in the U.S. to... Uh, work closely with my Marimba Ani and then Nana Mawia Kambon, both of which are um, brother, uh, sisters from the diaspora who have learned African spirituality. Since repatriating a little over a year ago, I've been working with three practitioners here in Botswana because I'm learning as well. Right. In addition, so I've let me got interject a, here. We're going to continue yes. the conversation. We're going to allow our, our dear brother leader Bandaka just to close and, and go because he must go now. But we'll continue the conversation, my sis, uh, sister Sesame. Is that okay? Not a problem. I just wanted to know about the secrecy part. I mean, I don't know if it's as secret as it is on the continent when they're practicing it uh, in the diaspora. Mm-hmm. That was the question. All right. Leader Bandaka, let's allow you to just comment and leave, my brother. Yes, with, with my deepest apology to every um, to everyone, I would have loved to stay on and, con- and take some questions. I'm always right, happy. We'll get you back. Things. We'll invite you back. We'll try and invite oh, you back, oh, my brother. Oh, oh, okay. Um, let me just take my, the first question from my beloved brother. Uh, it, it, I don't know if you can just help me to get the gist of the, the question, please. The first question. All oh, right. He he was saying that uh, um, that in history, how do we, that all how the do kingdoms we, and all the kingdoms. How do we unite the spiritual with it? Yeah, yes. yes. Can I just say, yes. Um, mm-hmm. beloved brother, um, that in African spirituality, the physical and the spiritual is never separated. That's what African, I'm aware of. Yes, uh, our very concept of the creator, whether we call the creator or the Dumare, whether we say Mwari, Mwari, Nyakusika in, in the Shona language, uh, or the Dumare in Yoruba, uh, or uh, Nananyame in Akan, we have many names for the creator, and in, in, in every African context, we see the Creator and we understand the Creator to be the totality of the universe manifested in all that is. Therefore, nature being the manifest character of the Creator, nature is the manifest presence of the Creator. This is why African spirituality, in essence, is about being in harmony with nature because we understand if we are in harmony with nature, we are at one with the Creator. Uh, we understand the Creator through studying the creation of the Creator. So there is no separation between our, our concept of spirituality and uh, with, with the physical um, that the Catholic Church has separated um, church from state. The church still has a profound in, uh, impact on the state and how the state is run. Uh, in this country, they tell us that church and state is separated, but Queen Elizabeth uh, is the constitutional head of of, uh, of state. She's also the constitutional head of the Anglican Church. So she becomes the embodiment of the union between church and state. Yeah? So it, it's a myth. It's a myth that they have separated church and state. And they, all the, bishop, the 26 bishops are in the House of Lords, the upper House of Parliament. So that's a, that's a myth, my brother. But if we go back to our African tradition, um, we will also recognize that our spiritual systems, our, the, our nations and our spiritual systems, they have the same name. You have a spiritual system called Yoruba. You also have a nation. We like to call them tribes. We've been conditioned to call them tribes. They are not tribes. They are nations. And we need to learn to say nations again and traditions and not call them tribes. Um, so you have a Akan uh, tradition, spiritual system, 
but it's also a nation. You have a Zulu spiritual system, but it's also a nation. Get my drift, my brother? Yes, I'm with yeah. you, my brother. I'm with you, yes. The spiritual yeah, so foundation of nation and state. Say it again? I'm saying I'm recognizing the spiritual foundation of church and state or empire. Absolutely. And, and they, they learned that from us, yes, my brother. Did. Because that was why they destroy our belief system and impose theirs on us so that we would not recognize ourselves. Yes. And, and if you understand in the context of living according, living according to the laws of nature, harmonizing with the laws of nature. African spirituality is in essence about harmonizing with the laws of nature. Well, nature is the physical manifestation of the presence of the Creator. The spirit, the spirit of the Creator is made manifest through the forces of nature. Nature is physical, but the yes. forces that give life to nature itself and gives nature its rhythm, gives nature its power, give nature its sound, its, its, its physical form, is spiritual. Yeah. Make sense? Yes, I'm with you, brother. Blessed. Blessed, blessed to you, my brother. And to, uh, to my beloved sister, who asked uh, uh, the question about the secrecy of African spirituality, uh, I think she was saying about uh, the secrecy on the continent. Yes, my brother. Yeah, that's that's a manifestation of our uh, the Maafa, mm. the invasion, conquest, enslavement, and colonization of African people, where mm. African spirituality, African traditions have been demonized. Everything African has been demonized, mm. and so in order to practice our African traditions, we have to do it under the quiet, in secret, because many of our own people have been conditioned to believe that our spirituality is evil. Mm. So many of the same Christianized and Islamized Africans practice African spirituality quietly. Mm. You see? Under the quiet, mm. in secret. They come out on church on, uh, on Sunday and, and sing great Jesus and, and, and wash me rather than snow Lord. But when things get tough, they run to the African to, uh, to the African priest, the African centered priest. Correct. Yeah? Correct. So and, and when I have, when I come back again I'll show you my own experience with my own Christianized grandmother who I love very, very dearly. Um, but I had an experience with her that I only talked about when I started talking about when I became an adult, when I became a man. Um, and after mm. my grandmother was, was long uh, reunited with the ancestors. But um, you know, we what we need to start doing my beloved sister, is bringing our African spiritual practices again into the open and that's normalizing. What that's what my next question, because that's what I'm doing now. And it seems Absolutely. like, you know, yes, I, I just speak out, but, you know, I think that's the only way we can really bring it. So I wanted to know your opinion on how to move forward. Oh, no, you, you have my you've already an, you've answered it already. You've answered it very well, my brother. Bless you, my sister, give thanks and praises. To, to say, uh, Africa, to the God of Africa, be all the glory. Tendai Mwari. Tendai Tendamari. Thank you so much, so, so much, Leader Bandaka. Um, you know, time was short. We know you have to leave now. We look forward to inviting you back uh, for a show at a different time, you know, when others can join in uh, uh, that maybe miss your shows during the evening. So, family, family, if you want to hear more from our brother Leader Bandaka, tune in to the Al Cable and Revivalist Movement show here on the Big G on Monday evenings from 8 p.m. through to 10 p.m. Tendamwari. Tendamwari. So as, bro as our brother leader Bandaka leaves us, uh, we still have in the group our sister Sesame, who's bringing African spirituality back out in the open in Botswana. Absolutely awesome. And uh, we also have in the group our brother Desmond, uh, who yes. has been studying uh, um, spirituality, our spirituality and the link between the rise of our empires and um, our spirituality. I see a, 
Um, caller 322, I've been trying to add you, but unfortunately I'm unable to add you just now, but I'll give us five minutes or so and we will bring you in. But let me first of all please go back to Brother Desmond. I wonder if you can enlighten us a bit more, my brother, about the study that you've been doing, about the linkages between, you know, the rise of some of our empires and, um, you know, us embracing our African spirituality and coming together in that oneness in order to for that to happen. Can well, you share some more of that works and research that you've been doing, please? Well, well you're aware that I've done my first book, and in terms of researching for my second one, I thought I'd go back a little bit deeper. And while I was researching my first book, I came across a number of things that I was unaware of at the time. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm reflecting and doing further research, there are a number of questions that I'm being faced with that I feel I have to go into. Mm-hmm. Now, we were socialized, I mean, I was brought up to be a Christian. I was baptized at the age of 15. Yes. Not that I had any choice in it because my parents, bless them, they were highly religious in yeah. terms of Christianity. Yes, I think all of us had that experience to talk of, almost yes, all of us, my brother. One of yeah. the dilemma I'm faced in now is that I have to recognize that my parents were brutalized and were forced to convert to an alien religion. Right, as so all of our parents were, yes. Right, mm-hmm. so in terms of honoring my ancestors, peace be upon them, I have to acknowledge that they went through a time of exile. And in that time of exile, they became, um, what you'd say, converted or they got um, brutalized into a different way of thinking. Right. Now that I recognize the, the bondage of exile and the bondage of oppression, I have had to challenge that personally while keeping my respect for my ancestors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I need to forgive them and also thank them for surviving Mm -hmm. the brutality which they underwent. Yeah, and it's recognizing that they probably never had a choice either. It was either convert or die. That was what enslavement was about. It was not just physical, it was also spiritual. Right, right. And and this is why now it's so, so important for us to liberate ourselves spiritually because, you know, although the chains and the shackles have been removed, shackles have been removed from our feet and our arms, you know, our brains are still shackled, you know, because uh, spiritually we're still prostrating ourselves, prostrating ourselves uh, to, to the same image of the slave master. So during our period of enslavement, you know, it was... It was a European on the horse that we were forced to actually, you know, almost worship and, and, and look to as our saviour. And now, you know, that slave master on the horse has been replaced with an image of a white god on the wall that, you know, where yeah, we yeah, could yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so prostrate even... before and bow down before. So this is such an important discussion that we need to have and to realise as well the connection between, you know, our spirituality and our culture. You know, and how, you know, if we're disconnected, if the two are disconnected, how, you know, uncentered and how broken we are uh, as a people. So you're doing some great work. Let me allow you to conclude and then I'm going to bring back in our sister Sesame and a couple of the other callers who are trying to come through. But, yes, so enlightening what you're saying. Let me allow you a couple more minutes of uh, to share some enlightenment with us on this, my brother. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, for example, if you look at the the experience of the indenture Indian that were transported to the sea beyond, then they were allowed to keep their religion. They were allowed to keep their language. And in terms of symbolic interaction, if you cannot interact within, within your own mother tongue and practice your own self belief, then you cease to be a people. Mm. Hmm. Because there's no people without a belief system. Mm -hmm. It's what binds us together as an aspect of our culture. Mm -hmm. Right, when you think of uh, maybe the Catholic having their communion, Mm -hmm. the communion is basically 
a celebration of the community. Yeah, and they're all doing it roughly the same time across the entire country and wherever they may be in the globe. Yeah. And it's bringing and them together. The it's practice. that spirit of oneness, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That and, and that was what enabled, um, the, for instance, the Christian belief system to establish a Eurocentric global domination. Yeah. So we've got to get back to our belief system. And also, as you were talking about, you know, the, the importance of the drum just come to my mind as well, because that yeah. drum, that beat of the drum also had us stepping together as, as one, you know, hence why our music is so important, because that heartbeat in the drum, you know, is what's yeah, and, pulling us together. Yeah, and if it's exactly pulling us right. in the wrong direction, you know, yeah. we're in trouble there as well. I mean, if you look at the, even the short history of the, the Cimarroni in Jamaica, they used the Hobeng, mm -hmm. and that was their signal to war. Mm -hmm. And the British were so afraid of them because they were able to merge mm -hmm. with the environment. Yes. They were the ones that taught them about camouflage. Yes, yes, Nanny and the Maroons, yes. Yeah, that's camouflage. The yes. British Army mm -hmm. goes to learn to practice it. Yes, yes. Because it's about recognizing that the spiritual and the natural is one and the same. Yes, yes. And it's being at one with nature. And they, and in, also in in eighty, they were also linked to their belief system because. If you believe, as you mentioned earlier, in the God of your oppressor, hmm. you cannot rise up against your oppressor because right. that becomes a mortal sin. Yes. But when your God is separate, you are able to champion your God. Yes. You believe and if you're... your God is mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you will love and respect people like you. Yes. And that's the, that, mm -hmm, the crux of it. Definitely. Yeah. My brother, well, we're going to have to return to this discussion. Well respected. Yes, rise up, sister, and bless it. I am really enjoying your program, and I look forward to it every Wednesday morning while I'm at the computer. I have it in the background, and sometimes <laughs> I just feel like I have to celebrate you and say thank you very much. And thank you so much, my brother. Much appreciate love your interaction as well. Keep up the great works thank and the inspiration for your books as well. And uh, actually, you. before you go, do you want to just mention the book title and where people can get it? Yes, it's, called, it's Stolen Inheritance, and uh, it can be accessed quite widely. I don't really want to promote um, the oppressor's institutions, mm -hmm. but you know where you can access it. Okay, and until we can do better, yeah, people know where they can get it, and uh, we'll have to yeah. make sure that some of our own uh, booksellers have it in yeah, stock I'm as well. Yeah, I'm trying to arrange something. I'm trying to arrange something, but at the minute it doesn't look very... Um, feasible but there's a long road to go yes well we'll get there my brother and we'll also have to make sure that copies reach uh botswana as well <laughs> let's bring well, back can be accessible in botswana. <laughs> yeah let's let's bring back our sister sesame thank All you right. very much my Let brother him. desmond one love him. rise yourself up thank you for listening and keeping it locked Love. sister sesame do we still have you in the group I am especially except I had to call back in and my phone is still ringing. I don't know if you are able to. Well, we're I can still we're hearing you fine. Yeah, the ringing. Oh, well, we're hearing you fine, my sister Sesame. Yes, and we're not hearing the ringing either. So please, yeah, okay. if you can proceed, <laughs> do do go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Sister Shanice, I'd, I'd like to thank you for bringing uh, the two, the, the, well, both of them, but the, this last speaker. Uh, it's so, so important for us to, to, to discuss the African, oh my, you know, it's really loud, it's ringing. Okay, let me allow you to ring off try, and but. ring back. Yes, because I, I did have to, I did add you twice because oh. I think you, you left the group and came back in. So let me allow you to ring off, clear the line and then ring back. So the lines are now open. Should you want to call back in? Our sister Sesame will be calling back in in a short while as well. So family, you heard, you know, from our, our brother leader Bandaka and uh, you know he explained to us 
just you know so articulately the importance of spirituality and the link of uh, spirituality to you know uh, and this is what we've got to do we've got to prepare ourselves spiritually so that we can progress economically yeah so I've just added our brother Jaminia back to the group let me see if I've been back and I've also managed to add Sister Sesame as well brother Jaminia welcome black my brother please hold while I allow uh, Sister Sesame uh, to to continue where she left off alrighty thank you Sister no problem Sesame, thank you so much yeah back over to you Sister Sesame Thank you so much, my sister Shanice. Um, it's much better now. I couldn't, I could barely hear anything. Um, I just wanted to send my appreciations to you and Galaxia Fiwi because uh, what you're doing is incredibly important. I don't even think you realize what impact it, it's having right here on the continent. I'm sure you are, but too humble to to admit it. But really, my appreciations for what you're doing. I'll tell you what's going on. This subject of African spirituality, I, I'll share a couple of personal um, stories, very brief, because I know I don't, don't have, we don't have all day. But um, having been brought up Christian and then converting to Islam and really trying to find myself, like you're saying, all of us have started somewhere else. What I have found to be the most crucial point in healing is reconnecting with African spirituality. And I started it while I was still in the U.S. with some of our sisters who had studied in, in Ghana. I believe it was Ghana or elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, Sister Shanice, I didn't even know what libation meant mm-hmm. a few years ago. Mm-hmm. I had never heard the word. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I, uh, you know, I digged into it, and of course I was already on the path, but I just cannot imagine life without doing daily libations and connecting with my ancestors. Wow. We're all on that In journey, my sis. We're all on that journey. Likewise, I can attest right. as well. A few years ago, you know, a few years back, I didn't even recognize libation. My dad used to always pour his water and pour his drink, but he never explained to us what he was doing. But, but yes, my sis, you know, we... We're, all, we're on that journey of reconnecting and some of us are further down the road than some of us are and I think it's really brave of us when we, you know, when we do let our family know, you know, it's okay not to know uh, everything about you know, libation and African spirituality you know, it's, it's a knowledge that we've been stripped of and uh, you know, so we're reconnecting and we're picking up the fragments, you know, from the downloading that some of us are getting from, from our ancestors you know, uh, but, but Sister Shanice, you know what's beautiful about what you're saying? I, I hate to interrupt you. That's Your right. father was doing libations. He wasn't saying what he was doing, mm-hmm. but he was performing libations mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Yes. My father here on the continent and my mother mm-hmm. did nothing as far as libations, but I'll tell you what's happened since I've returned. And it's happened because I've reconnected with my African self and live in a village where the people are more in tune with who they are. I've actually met an elder. It's one of three elders that I've been learning from who mm-hmm. stopped by. And I've noticed every time we, you know, that we're around this individual that they're really doing libation. They don't say anything, mm-hmm. but I've seen it being done. So I think it's beautiful that your father... You know, our parent, our elder, our, you know, brother, yeah. who had been kidnapped, who's really from the lineage of those kidnapped, was still doing libation. Yeah. So maybe things are not as terrible as we, we th- they are bad. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if some of our people who are descendants of those who were kidnapped were still doing libation, yeah. that's why it's crucial, the repatriation or the, just the reconnection with the diaspora is so important. Yeah. Because imagine here on the continent, the only people that I remember that it came, it dawned on me that they were spiritual people yeah. were my grandparents, uh-huh. not my parents. Uh-huh. Not my parents. My maternal grandmother, I know there were things that were going on and I've since been asking. And it's clear that that's what she was. She was literally forced to convert to Christianity. Mm. My paternal grandmother, who raised me up to about the age of six, mm. 
And she's one of those that I do libation to daily. Mm-hmm. But she was also a traditional midwife. She shared a, 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 a story about delivering a baby, a difficult delivery that the medical, the, the, the British or English system couldn't deliver mm-hmm. in their clinic. And they remember that she was there in the village and she came and delivered there. And she was in her 80s wow. using crutches to move around. You see, so this is so important for our people. The homeschool we just started here in Botswana that I just started, Sister Shanice, yes. the first and foremost class that I decided was crucial was African spirituality. Yes. We've been doing just for a month. But part of the know thyself is African spirituality. And we're going to have to find ways of getting in there slowly, yes. you know, yes. but yes. surely because our people yes. have been totally killed Mm -hmm. and bewitched Mm -hmm. by the devil Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the white devil totally bewitched and so if you give them everything at one time they just you know they wouldn't understand it yeah but we're going to have to connect them to yes to their true self. Yes, and, and at least if that, they've got the knowledge of it today, then later on in life, when they, you know, when they know they need something more, they know what to turn to. You know, but it's about sowing the seeds, planting the seeds, and we just keep slowly watering it and watering it, and then there will come the time, you know, when they will just switch on and switch over, and that consciousness will just awaken in them. Yes, my sis. Oh, I'm excited the, about your the nature, school as the well. connection to the nature. Yes, 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 my sis. <laughs> connection to nature. You know, this is a part that I say you will never get this in the diaspora. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. I know some of you are too in love with with, with living over there. <laughs> you know, I lived there for about 35 years, more than 35 years, and there is no place like home back on the <laughs> continent. Because I'll tell you what, some of the ways that I've been able to reconnect and remember things there are certain plants that I found growing in the in the piece of property that I bought mm-hmm. it's a small you know it's a, it's a reasonable plot here in the village and, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't I did not allow them to cut off the trees like they do I said listen just unless they're interfering with the building of the house we're not removing anything because yes. I found out that every single plant was medicinal mm-hmm. in this place and can I just and interject so, there very, very quickly, actually? And that's something that I think we as the diaspora here need to be aware of and near, near, need to insist on as well, because what are, uh, often happens on the continent is uh, they prepare the land for the plots, and in preparing the land, they bulldoze down all the trees, and they just leave the land bare, bare, bare. We've got to discourage them from doing that. You know, not only, you know, are they rooting up all of those medicinal plants and, and trees that have been established for decades that could bring us all the fruits and veget, uh, you know, the healing that our body needs, but also, you know, it's making the soil prone to floods as well. So we really need to, you know, make up, uh, you know, the, the developers that, that when they sell the land aware that they shouldn't, you know, just clear the land of all of the, the trees and the vegetation that's there. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I've seen it, you know, three times over within the last year, you know, that that is what mm-hmm. they tend to do uh, before giving you the land. So you might know you're going to get a pot, plot of land and it's got coconut trees and almond trees mm-hmm. there and da, da, da. And then you go and it's like, we've cleared it for you. Like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very no. absolutely important, Sister Shin. Absolutely important. Because, you know, my my home now in this in our neighborhood is the only one with the most shrubs, trees, especially the shrubs. Yeah. And the stuff still growing. There was one that I smelled and I said, I remember this plant and there was a fruit that we used to eat from it. I couldn't remember the name. And I just took off a little twig and took it to my my big, you know, cousin who who's elder now and the husband, they know plants. Yeah. They're in their seventies, yeah. and they immediately both said what. It, and then I remembered the name. You're gonna have to document and all so, of those because you know where we're oh, working trust out. Me, the journal, the yeah. journal is just getting longer because <laughs> the other things, Sister Shani said, I'm gonna get off and give somebody else a chance because <laughs> okay. you know Botswana is open for our brothers and sisters to repatriate. Yes. You know, it's been over a year that I've been back. I've got 40 hectares of land oh, that I've already beautiful. fenced. 
you know, we'll be working on putting a borehole that's solar powered. Wow. But the place where I'm living right now, which is really my residence, as a conference center. Yes. We've got two bedrooms for, for, for rent. If people don't want to stay in a hotel, if they do or want to yes. stay in a guest house, yes. we've also got that available. I've already had a guest from the U.S., a brother yes. who came to, to check it out yes. and absolutely loved it. And then we have our home school. These yes. plants are going to be part of our biology, so-called biology class, but it's really going to be, you know, part of the, the African spirituality yes. and the healing with plants. Yes. And I've been speaking to Brother Pi Ratio, and then I'll get right. off. Yeah, yeah. Because I met him through you the other day. I think it was last week when he was That's on, right. a week before. Week and that's been fantastic. He's been teaching the student. We've been having lessons already. Oh, wonderful. Oh, my God. So fantastic. well. So well. The math is going so well. The students absolutely love it. I have four students. I've got one who's been trained to be a trainer because Great. we want to make sure that everything we do mm-hmm. is going to be continued on when we are not around. Yeah. So it's... It, Working out really well. We're still in the early stages, but we've connected well, and the homeschool is going to continue. So I thank you, and uh, I thank you too as I, well for doing the works that, that you're doing out there in Botswana for making the links, you know, for opening the door, you know, and for switching on the light bulbs. I was telling you, as a result of last drug, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to put together my African history curriculum because you know we need to be delivering uh, online training courses because we we can do it we can deliver online workshops online classes you know through the teleconferencing sy- system to mm-hmm. our brothers and sisters in Africa so you know that's another um, a piece of work that we need to be doing here organizing ourselves as lecturers as trainers and looking at you know the information that we will have that we can share put it together you know uh, as in the same format that the colleges and the universities would do or the schools would do and you know if necessary even look to to get it accredited so it's more attractive to our brothers and sisters who are of the mindset that we need a wazungu qualification you know so that we could be delivering yeah right here we could be let's, doing that let's, from here. let's do it my sis yeah, we're let's do, do it, it. And I, talk, yeah. I mean we've got we've got tutoring centers here all over the place and and, and mm-hmm. one of the most important things that you mentioned earlier and somebody else mentioned i think a brother who called in maybe Yes, the brother in Ghana, the pineapple, yes. uh, with the pineapple Brother farm. Chimenea, yeah. You know, the, I think the most important thing about our association and our connection with uh, with Galaxy, I feel, is that we are people that are really on a different level, so to say. Mm-hmm. They've got teachers here, they've got tutoring centers, they've got everything. Mm-hmm. But these are people who are trained by our enemies mm-hmm. and that's the difference mm-hmm. that we are now on a different level we're talking about African spirituality our children need to be taught a different way because yes. they have been miseducated for way too long yes. into the self-hatred yes self-hatred yes. one of the students even talked about black is horrible oh, and no. I said well what happens when you look in the mirror who what do you see on you and then he kind of said black and I said, well, what does that mean? You know, how do you feel about oh, that? Dear. That's you. So by so age 11, because I think I remember you saying, mm-hmm. I've just added back our brother Jemenia. Bringing you in in just uh, one, two minutes, brother Jemenia. So uh, uh, just imagine mm-hmm. at the age of 11, they're already looking in the mirror and not liking who they see, not liking their blackness. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. So we've got mm-hmm. a works to do indeed. Rise yourself up, my beautiful sister Sesame, for the works that you're doing out there in Botswana. We are coming. <laughs> We're coming to Botswana as well, my sis. <laughs> All right. Well, you're welcome, and we'll see you, my sis, Thank when you, you. come. And uh, give thanks. Thank you so, so much. More power, more strength to you, my sis. And you know what, family? If it wasn't for the courageousness of some of our heroes and sheroes who were prepared to stand up, who were prepared to stand out, and who were prepared to in their time to do exactly what was needed in order to free us from the bondage that we were in during those times of our enslavement, we may still be slaves today. We may still have been in chains today had it not been for the bravery of some of our liberationists such as Bookman Dotti from Jamaica though whose mother also we rise up his mother because she was also a great revolutionist woman yes so we rise up Bookman Dotti the one who left Jamaica and went to Haiti and stirred up the people there who, who was the spark you know of the Haitian revolution we rise up his spirit and we remember his name so his great works will live on and we also rise up all the other awesome brothers and sisters who took part in that Haitian revolution Haitian revolution you know people like Toussaint the Overture 
We rise you up, people like Desalines. We rise you up, rise up their spirits because had it not been for, for the power of the spirits that was in them that they allowed to actually take over and consume them in that awesome, awesome ceremony that they had before the revolution took place. It was what sparked the succession of liberation fights across the Caribbean and across Africa. So we rise them up. Jean Shots, Desilines, Tous on the Overture, Bookman Duffy, we rise them up for the little work that they did during their time. Yes, and uh, we also rise up those great liberation fighters in Jamaica as well. People like Sam Sharp, Sam Sharp, people like Paul Bogle. Yeah, we rise up Marcus Messiah Garvey. We rise them up for the great work that they did during their time. We also rise up beautiful sister in Cecile Fatiman. We rise up Shaka Zulu, Queen Makeda, Kunta Kinte, Sojourner Truth, Nat Turner, Steve Biko, Queen Nzinga, Hannibal, Suzanne Belair, Paul Bobo, Samare Toure. We rise them all up. Queen Naya Bingi, Queen Nanny of the Maroons. We rise up your spirits so that your spirits of courageousness and fearlessness, fearlessness can be within each and every one of us that's listening right now. We rise up, Ya Ashantawa. We rise up, Amy J. H. Garvey. We rise up, Thomas Sankara, Kwame Nkrumah, President Sekatore, Silvana Salimpio, Modifa Kita, Morris Bishop, Huey Newton, Bobby Steele, Malcolm X. We rise up all of these wonderful, awesome heroes and sheroes of ours. Morris Mopolo, Joseph Okito, Dulce September, Jason Sandewa, Lauren Camellia, Emperor Eli Selassie, Empress Melanie, Claudia Jones, John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, Dr. Sebi. All those wonderful, wonderful individuals who walked this earth during their time came with a purpose and decided that despite all of the odds they were going to do what needed to be done for the betterment of their race, for the betterment of their race. So we rise them all up in the spiritual realm for the work that they did. Yes, sir. Mahumusa, we rise you up that leader of the East African Naya Bingi spiritual practice. We rise up your spirit as well. You know, we have the real heroes and sheroes. We don't need Batman, Spider-Man and Batwoman. We've got the real deal. We've got the real heroes and sheroes. And let's call their names. Let's share their names with our children and our children's children so that their names will live on for eternity because had it not been for their great works and their courageousness, we may well still have been on the plantations with the whips on our back, experiencing another 500 years or so of slavery because great men and women like that are among us all the time but they don't always have the courage to step forward so we rise up those, you know, who did step forward and we rise up those who continue to fight the struggle today because the struggle continues we may no longer have the chains around our arms and the chains around our neck and our feet, but there are the psychological scars and chains on our brains that's stopping us from doing all that needs to be done. And so we still need to continue to liberate ourselves mentally, liberate ourselves from that addiction of everything Eurocentric and Western and find back our own greatness that lies inside of us so that we can come again with some of the great cities and kingdoms and empires that we once had as a people. So rise up all those who are continuing in the struggle, rise up those who are struggling in the Congo, those who are struggling in Cameroon, those who are struggling in South Africa, those who are struggling on, in other countries across the continent, those who are suffering enslavement even until today in Libya, where therefore you are brothers and sisters, where therefore you are brothers and sisters. And so, you know, those who are suffering in Mauritiana and wherever you may be suffering and struggling, we send in the powers of the Mauritius to strengthen you, to eliminate fear from your psyche and to stand up as a brave, courageous brother or sister and to do what needs to be done during these times to overcome the situation of enslavement or suffering that you may be in. We'll 
also want to remember the thousands of Africans who died fighting on the plantation. The spirits know your name, and we remember you right now, and the, and the thousands who died at sea, shipped from Africa to Europe or the Americas. We remember your souls right now. Just want to remember all of those who lost loved ones during those times, because as a result of some of those people who were lost, their descendants never came into being. But we are the descendants of the survivors. We are the descendants of those who managed to survive those awful, wicked centuries of enslavement. And so, you know, we're a powerful people. You know, we're the fittest of the fittest, because only the fittest of the fittest actually managed to survive. So let's remember that we have all of that going for us as a people. We are, we are certainly, certainly overcomers.